Welcome back to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We'll be right back with today's guest, but first let's hear from our podcast sponsors to make this all possible. We want to say thanks to Final Forms for their support. Final Forms is the industry leader in registration, but you have to know this. Final Forms is more than just forms. Final Forms is a team, it's technology, and it's a service that provides schools in the areas of compliance, communication, and even risk management. Final Forms can help your stakeholders with mobile accessibility, has reminders for parents about policies, about physicals, and all the forms that go with athletics. Final Forms can help with team communication, uh, with attendance, and even certification management for coaches. And for athletic directors, Final Forms can help with eligibility, with rosters, all the reports that come across your desk. And it does this using secure language translation and ADA compliance. It's time for you to talk to a team that's walked in your shoes. To take the next steps and find out what Final Forms can do for you, go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake. That's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started on the Final Forms team. We also want to thank Huddle for their support. Remember at Huddle, we power sports. Over 200,000 teams, including some of the best in the world, use Huddle to help their teams play better using video and analytics. Huddle is the complete performance platform. They have online tools, mobile and desktop apps, smart cameras like the Huddle Focus. There's analytics, but there's a whole lot more. Huddle is also built for every level of play from club and youth teams all the way through high school and college programs. And even the pros are using Huddle to help their athletes perform at the very highest level. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including your student athletes, a lot of their parents, and the coaches, the college teams, you're trying to get to recruit your kids. If you want to find out more about what Huddle can do for you and your program and how your school can become a Huddle school, go to huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. We also want to say thanks to Violet Defense for their support. Violet Defense is dedicated to protecting our world from germs by bringing the power of UV disinfection to everyday spaces. Their patented technology enables them to harness the power of the sun to incorporate ultraviolet light into products and environments like never before. Whether you're ready to implement existing products, or if you'd like to explore researching and developing a custom deployment of their technology for your school, Violet Defense has the solutions and the experience you need. Go to violetdefense.com for more information about their great products. We also want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive. You know, it's becoming harder and harder to fund an athletic department, but Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards can generate $10,000 or more every year, while also creating excitement in the gym and the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or call them at 832-786-0302 to schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com and see exactly what their fantastic products can do for you. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. We also want to thank Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They've got a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles and an extensive library of templates to make it easier than ever to recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. For more ideas now to showcase your school's diverse history, along with your proudest moments, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com or learn more and get started with your digital Wall of Fame tribute. Call them at 614-981-3589, or you can email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. You can find out more about what Hometown Ticketing can do for you and your athletic department by going to hometownticketing.com and talk to their experts. 
hometown ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. And we want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack also gives the 95% of your parents and the student athletes that love your program a voice, and it helps them demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for them. Go to athleticsurveys.com and check out their testimonials, and then give them a call at 1-800-738-6466, or you can email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Talk to the pros at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them show you how to take your athletic program from good to great. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We're going out to Colorado today and visit with a new friend, Autumn Sereno. Autumn is a certified athletic administrator, and she is the assistant principal and athletic director at Green Mountain High School in Lakewood, Colorado. Uh, Autumn and I met at the recent uh, NADC conference out in Denver, uh, had a chance to talk, thought she'd be a great guest for our listeners. So Autumn, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, thanks for having me here. This is pretty cool. <laughs> well, we've had a couple guests from Colorado, but we always like to hear what's going on in other parts of the country. So let's go and jump right in. Uh, we like to let our listeners have a chance to get to know our guests. So give us that five minute bio, uh, where you were born, where you grew up, uh, maybe some sports background and, and how your path has led you now to uh, Green Mountain High School. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm actually an East Coaster. And, um, you know, I feel like I'm not really allowed to say that anymore because I've been here since 2005 and almost been here longer than I was in New York. So, um, so I'm from upstate New York. So, hey, upstaters, how you doing? Um, I went to SUNY Brockport. So many of you probably know if you're on the East Coast, you know exactly what SUNY is. And it makes me happy when people do um, play basketball there. And I don't know, I was there my whole life. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess when I was younger, I just, I'm, I'm the first in my family to go to college. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that the big driver there was sports. Um, and so that's something that I talk to my kids a lot now about, um, is just the fact that I wanted to keep playing sports. So in order to do that, well, then you go to college and then you can keep playing. It's weird though, because you have to also like take some classes and stuff. Right. So <laughs> there's that. Um, but no, I, I, you know, that's why I, I moved forward. And then I started uh, developing a passion for education and for more athletics. Of course, I played so many different things as a kid. I mean, I played um, basketball, softball, volleyball, lacrosse. Um, I grew up in the Finger Lake region. So I was a big water skier, um, snow skiing too. Like we just did, you name it, we did it, you know, like did everything. I, I was a swimmer, actually I was a diver. I was a slacker. I was not good at diving, but it was fun for a minute, like with my friends. Um, so I did a lot of different things. And, um, you know, like I said, I ended up uh, after my undergrad, ended up out here in Colorado. And this is where I've been. My whole teaching career has been out here, aside from my student teaching and a little bit of coaching back um, in New York. But other than that, it's, it's all been out here in Colorado. Sports have driven me that way. Well, um, you know, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, the upstate New York and the SUNY system, uh, actually a little familiar with that. Our youngest daughter went to SUNY Potsdam, uh, ran cross country up there. So Bears, uh, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and made that, uh, made that trip, uh, a couple of times, but, uh, very, yeah. very cool. Um, Let's go and talk a little bit. Uh, you, you mentioned, uh, I think that you had a friend out in Colorado. That's a big, uh, you know, move. Uh, I went from Oregon to ended up in Florida. So how'd you end up in Colorado? How'd that work out? Yeah, um, I had a friend, her sister is a principal out here in Colorado. And that's how I ended up out here. I mean, I keep telling people I threw a dart at a map and, you know, it, it's somewhat there because I was kind of open for anything. Um, but that was kind of the furthest away that I was looking. And 
so came out here to visit once and to visit her and that was fun and then you know she had an opening and so I applied and it worked out um I did like a, I did a phone interview we didn't have like I mean I think Skype was a thing but it was like pretty new and nobody was doing it for interviews of course and now it's like this is the best way to roll um but yeah I had I remember sitting at the dining room table and I had all my papers laid out and I was like okay I've got all my stuff right here my philosophy like this that everything like as if I needed to like do you really have time during an interview to like start reading through your notes no but it made me feel better and clearly I did pretty well in the interview so ended up out in Colorado and uh yeah she kind of she was a great mentor she was really fun to work for um it was funny because I had kind of a more personal relationship with her and the other she was the type of leader that everybody respected but there was a little healthy fear there you know and so for people to walk by her office and see me with my feet kicked up on the desk like just you know chatting it up you know they were like oh my God, she's new. And she's like, does she not know? Like, little do they know, like, you know, at that, at that time, at the beginning, they didn't realize that, you know, we had, you know, we had known each other and stuff. And I was staying at her house for a few weeks until I found a place to live <laughs> when I moved out here. But um, she was a great mentor. She kind of pushed me in the administrator direction um, to become an athletic director. And, you know, she had kind of pushed me to do some professional development with the other staff and the building. Um, a lot of classroom management type stuff. And, um, you know, she was saying, Hey, you should, you should really get your administrator's license. You'd be a great assistant principal, principal, whatever. And also if you wanted, you know, like to stay in athletics, you would need this to be an athletic director in, in Colorado. So, um, different in every state, but here in Colorado, especially the larger schools, um, they do require that you have a principal's license in order to be an athletic director. And you have two roles, assistant principal and athletic director, which is exactly what I like. You know, we, we preach to our kids to be good student athletes. And so I feel like that's, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm a student athlete. So my first thing is making sure that, you know, we've got good things going on in the classroom. I'm helping teachers, you know, in regard to, you know, what's best for their kids and helping them with their, with their classroom instruction. Um, and then on the other side of it, I get to dive into sports and all the athletics and everything that goes along with that. Um, so yeah, she kind of helped push me there. And so that's what I did. And so, yeah, I coached for a little bit, um, got that under my belt. I coached a uh, girls basketball I was a head girls basketball coach at such a young age. Oh my God. I was 22 as a head coach. Like, what was I doing? You know, I think I'd be so much better now. Like I need to go back into, I need to retire from this and just go coach. Right. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's, that's kind of how I ended up, you know, where I am, I guess. Uh, I was thinking about that image you painted uh, in the principal's office with your feet up on the desk. Uh, that probably got you some street cred with the uh, the veteran teachers. Boy, that's Sereno. You know, look at her. You know, she's taking charge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely did. It was pretty funny. Um, and at the elementary schools, and some people know this if they've taught at elementary level, but we all eat together. Like the staff, like when they can, like if they're mm -hmm. kind of scheduled to slide into the right time, we, we do. We sit in a lounge and we eat together. When you go to high school, everybody's in their own little silos. Yeah. And so as we're there together, they're all like, somebody brought it up. One of the ones that's, you know, not afraid to say anything. One of my good friends. And she's like, what are you doing with your feet kicked up? I'm like, mm. what? I, you know, we were just talking. <laughs> the rest of them were kind of going, oh, my God. Yeah. No, it was good. It's good to have uh, that sort of relationship with with the your superiors, I feel. No, absolutely. No, I, I love it. For our listeners, we're visiting today with Autumn Sereno. She's a certified athletic administrator, and she's the assistant principal and athletic director at Green Mountain High School in Lakewood, Colorado. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back with some more. Please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to thank Final Forms for their support of the Educational AD Podcast. Final Forms is the industry leader in athletic registration, but you got to know this. Final Forms is more than just forms. Final Forms is a team, it's technology, and it's a service that can provide your schools with compliance, communication, and even risk management solutions. Final Forms can help your stakeholders with things like mobile accessibility and has reminders for parents about policies, about physicals, and all the forms that go with athletics. 
Final forms can help with team communication, uh, can help with attendance, and even certification management for coaches. For ADs, final forms can help with eligibility, with rosters, and all the reports that come across your desk. And it does this using secure language translation and it's ADA compliant. It's time for you to walk with a team that's walked in your shoes. Go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake to take the next steps and find out what final forms can do for you. That's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started and become a member of the final forms team. Welcome back everyone to the educational AD podcast. Our guest today is Autumn Sereno. She's an assistant principal and athletic director at um, <laughs> Green Mountain High School, goodness gracious, in Lakewood, Colorado. Autumn, uh, share with our listeners a little bit uh, that transition period from going uh, from teacher coach to the other side of the desk and becoming an athletic director and, as you mentioned, uh, an assistant principal. Uh, what were some of the exciting things? What were some of the challenges? Uh, and, you know, just how was that transition, as you mentioned, you know, at, let's say an early stage in your career? Yeah, um, I started pretty young as an, as an administrator and as a teacher just right out of the gate, right after my undergrad, which lots of people do. Um, but the administrator part was pretty young comparatively. Um, I believe I was 29 when I became an administrator. And so, um, again, I, I, was, I was ready for that step because I'm always ready for the next challenge. But uh, it was a little bit like bittersweet because I, had to, I knew at that point I was going to have to let go of coaching as well wasn't going to be able to coach and be the athletic director. Um, they didn't allow that. And, and even now, like some schools do, or some districts do, some don't, um, it can be kind of seen as a conflict, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I coach, I was a head coach for six years and um, I had three athletic directors during that time. And one of them happened to be a female and she was the last one that I had that has always been a big mentor of mine um, or for me. And she, she was uh, wanting to transition to be a principal. And so she had transitioned um, to be an assistant principal only and taking the athletics away um, and focusing more on that side. But she happened to be in the office right next door. And so it was kind of nice being able to slide into that position and then start from there and have somebody right there that I can ask questions to. And she was very knowledgeable um, of all the Chassa rules, all of our state rules and everything like that. And, and the district too, because she had been in the district, every district can be a little bit different. Um, but she was a great person to kind of balance things off from. She was also very gritty. Um, I feel like we kind of have a similar personality in the fact of like, we're going to try and get better here, you know, and, you know, we're not just going to skate along. Like we're going to, you know, we're going to make changes where we need to make changes. Um, we're going to set the bar high for our student athletes because that's what we should do. Um, that's the right thing to do. And that's going to help them get through things, um, better and, and life, life situations as well. So, um, she was pretty awesome. I remember when that point happened, I wasn't sure I had no idea she was ready to hang up her hat with the athletic stuff. And her and the principal called me into their office one day to have a chat. And she told me, and they're like, how, how would you like to come on and, you know, be our athletic director? And I, I had a big smile. I know I had a big smile on my face, but tears started to fall down my face, <laughs> which, you know, we're not, we're not quite the tech crying type, but you know, it happens here and there. Um, and she looked at me and I, I love her response. She looked at me and she goes, you're not going to cry. Are you like, as my eyes are welling up and I'm like, no. And then the minute I say no, you know, they start falling. But all I could think of was okay, I'm letting go of my girls, I'm letting go of my team right now. And that was like kind of the biggest thing. I was ready for the step, but you know, that being, you know, having to let go of my girls. And it was like in May or something like that. It's where a season had just ended. I had a great group of girls. So the next person coming in was really set up really well. Um, but yeah, so that's, you know, I ended up being in that same building, which is kind of its own transition in itself too. You know, you have all these people that you've been teaching and coaching with in that same building. And now you are taking another step and you're seen as a superior now. And so um, that was interesting to get used to and um, definitely had some people that, you know, I had one of my good friends, he's a, uh, he's now a track coach down in Southern uh, Colorado. Um, but he, uh, 
he came up to me into my office one day and kind of just mentioned that I don't feel like we talk anymore, you know, that sort of thing, like the whole friendship piece. And I really had to figure out how to balance that. And it wasn't anybody's fault. It's just like you start going and there's so many things as everybody knows it's in athletics, a lot of moving parts. And so you kind of, I don't know, my, my friendships and stuff like that, they didn't necessarily suffer. It just changed a bit of like not being able to hang out as often and, you know, with all the busyness of, of athletics. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, as you were telling that story, uh, it, it made me think when I became the athletic director at my last school, before I retired, I was there for uh, five years and, uh, at one end of the gym, the entire end of the gym on the other side of the wall, that was the coach's office area. So all of our coaches, almost all of them that taught on campus were there. And my office was at the opposite end of the gym. And so uh, it, it, it took a while to uh, for the coaches to, and again, I was a new guy, so they didn't know me like they your coaches knew you, but the door was always open and a couple of them, you know, might would pop in in the morning and we'd have a cup of coffee or something, but the word eventually got out, but okay. Yeah. He's the boss, but you know, he's, he's okay to talk to. So, uh, you know, yeah. that, that, that's that whole dynamic of, uh, you know, Hey, we used to be friends. We were coaches together, but now I'm your boss. Uh, very, very good point to share. And I love that you led naturally into our next segment. We're going to take another break about uh, mentors. Uh, you know, what a great, a mentoring experience you had. We're going to hear a little bit more about mentors from our guest today, Autumn Sereno. She's a certified athletic administrator, and she's the assistant principal and athletic director at Green Mountain High School in Lakewood, Colorado. So let's take another quick break here from one of our sponsors, but please come back. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to say thank you to Huddle for their support. Over 200,000 teams, including some of the best in the world, use Huddle to help their teams play better using video and analytics. Huddle's the complete performance platform. They have online tools, mobile and desktop apps, smart cameras like the Huddle Focus. There's always been analytics, but there's so much more. Huddle's also built for every level of play from club and youth teams all the way through high school and college programs. And even the pros use Huddle to help their teams play at the highest level. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including your student athletes, a lot of their parents, and the coaches of the college and university teams you're trying to get to recruit your kids. If you wanna find out more about what Huddle can do for you and your program and how your school can become a Huddle school, go to huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Welcome back, everyone. We're visiting with Autumn Sereno from Green Mountain High School in Lakewood, Colorado. Autumn, uh, in that last segment, you did a great job of sharing uh, a mentoring experience from one of your mentors. Um, and for this next segment, let's you know maybe expand on that. Uh, none of us get to where we're at on our own. So who are some of the other folks that have helped you along the way, maybe uh, with a pat on the back or a kick in the butt? Uh, who have your mentors been? Um, well, as I was mentioning before, I definitely had one that was right next to me. That was awesome. Um, Tracy was, you know, and being, a, again, being a female in, in this industry is, is, you know, we're, we're very few and far between, um, especially in the state of Colorado anyway. I mean, that's kind of, there's very few of us here. And so having somebody that's super successful, um, and I always saw her that way and also being able to kind of, you know, make those changes and make the hard decisions and, have those tough conversations and doing them with such grace and integrity. It's, it was great to, to see. And I feel like I had a lot of female mentors in that aspect and didn't think much about it until probably, you know, when I became an administrator is when I saw it more, I didn't really think about it as much being younger, but I also knew that, um, I don't know, like I wasn't, I don't feel like I was in those worlds. Like there were other female head basketball coaches in our league. But then when I got outside of the Colorado Springs area, I was in Colorado Springs at that time. Um, when I got outside that area, I kind of noticed there were less and less, you know, um, we just happened to have a good little crew right there and we kind of stuck together too. But um, I don't know. I mean, she was a really great mentor. I had my first principal that was really great kind of pushing me to get 
you know, my administrator's license along with my master's degree, you know, kind of putting those together. And, um, you know, I've had some um, at the, the state association office, uh, Tom Robinson being one of them, really great guy, um, unfortunately just passed away recently, um, but really great dude. And um, one of those individuals that you can call at any time and talk to. I had a few others there too. And it, it's funny because, uh, you know, as I, as I talk about the females and mentors in my life, like a lot of males came from that one. Um, Bert Borgman, really great guy in the state association as well has retired, but Azello. I mean, those were the people that I could kind of call upon if I was, you know, applying for another job. And then Rhonda Blanford Green, our current, um, now going to retire, um, Chassa uh, commissioner was a great one as well. And then just along the lines, like I just always had people, I feel very fortunate in the fact that I had people um, in my world that in my league, um, outside of the league, but just somehow how I've um, been able to connect with them that have been really, really great. And again, I feel like the people that I really um, I was kind of attracted to, to hang out with and to, to bounce ideas off from were kind of those people that had a lot of, I mean, they always had really good integrity. And I wonder if that's just an underlying thing coming from, you know, other mentors in my life at a younger age and stuff like that. But yeah, just great people. And you know, the right thing and the right thing is sometimes not the easiest thing or, or the easiest thing to hold to either. You know, it's easier just to go another direction, but what does that teach everybody? You know, so I don't know. I felt pretty, I feel pretty lucky in the fact of the people that I know and currently know. I mean, I, there's still some of them out there that have not retired yet, but even though they've retired, they're still there, you know, and you can bounce those ideas off from. So it's pretty great. Yeah, those, those retired people, they still have a, a little bit to offer. So uh, they have a little bit more time to yeah. offer you to have those conversations to listen Absolutely. to you complain. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, during um, the, the, what you were just sharing there, all the people that have impacted you, and, and again, as you mentioned, there's a lot more, but you did some work to you know create that network. They didn't all reach out to you, you reached out to them. Uh, talk a little bit about as you become an AD, one of the steps, hopefully, and this is kind of aimed at our younger listeners, uh, you get involved with your state association, and then hopefully through that you get involved with NIAAA. So talk a little bit about that. You know, how'd you get started with Colorado Association? And obviously you're a CAA. So tell your story about uh, the LTI courses and, and how that all played out. Well, again, it was, I mean... <laughs> Tracy is getting way too much recognition right now. That's all I'm saying. But she was really great. She pushed me to do those things. And like, I'm very well versed when I was a coach. If I took that, the state test, I had to take it a couple of times to pass. I was like, ah, oh, what's the rule there? I know that rule book, like very, very well at this point, ask me a question. I've got an answer for you. Um, and it was mainly because she, again, she pushed me to um, like that year, even within, she knew that that's what I wanted to do. So she was helping me get hours and not only that, but just like, hey, you should come to um, legislative council. You should come to state track. Like I remember doing those couple of things with her and sitting in on those and she would kind of give me little tidbits on the side of like, so this is what this means or yeah, this has been a big point of contention for a while now and now we're finally passing it. Um, state track was really fun to go to with her. Um, you know, we, we actually host it. Now, now I'm in the district that hosts it. Um, in the state of Colorado here in Jefferson County. We have an amazing stadium. And I remember my first time being there. State track is the coolest thing ever. And I've never been a, I mean, running for me was like a punishment in every sport that I did. So it's like beyond me why these people want to like run for fun, but whatever. I have much respect for them because they do. And it takes a lot of motiva self-motivation. Um, but going to that was really cool. Um, getting to put medals over some of our kids' heads. And of course, others I don't even know, but looks on their faces, some of them in their cap and gowns, because it always happens to be around graduation time. Um, but yeah, they, she kind of pushed me that direction to get involved, jump in. Um, so that's, that's what I knew of it is this is what you do it, it, to help give back to your association and to help make things run. It doesn't run on its own. We need people to do it and people to be a part of that. Um, so she pushed me pretty, pretty well to go into there. She also had said like, right away, you should take, you're going to this you know, in my first year, you're, you're going to the state conference. You should take a couple classes there. You should get your CAA. Okay, well, fine. She's like, 
this is the class you're going to take and you're going to want to quit, but don't quit. You'll be fine. And it was the law and re the review and yeah. law class that every story he tells, like, there's no way that you're not going to get sued. Like, it's like the most terrifying thing when you go to these things and, you know, you set yourself, you set your stuff up and you hope that nobody gets hurt by jumping the fence that clearly states that you shouldn't be there, but you're still liable. Like you gotta be kidding. But I mean, that that's kind of, you know, going to those different things and then meeting all the other athletic directors and what they're doing and being a big part of um, the state association, whether it's the athletic directors association or the actual um, Chassa state association. Um, it was just something that, you know, like this is my profession. This is what I want to do. I want others to get better. I want to get better. And so by doing that, I, I need to engulf myself in it as much as possible. And so that's what I did. Just jumped right in head first. Yeah, again, uh, I, I'd love to hear those mentoring stories about uh, there's usually one person that's uh, just, you know, whether it's a push or a nudge or a shove uh, that, that's helping you along the way. I wouldn't be doing my job as a former member of the NIAAA certification committee if I didn't uh, challenge you to keep taking those LTIs and get that CMAA uh, knocked out. Exactly. No, you're right. I do need to do that. And that's been that's on my list. Absolutely. And we push everybody to do that too. I'm on CADA. I'm on the Colorado Athletic Director Association. And that's what we do. Every monthly meeting that we have with the newbies and stuff like that, we're like, you need to jump in. You need to take some of these classes. And they're great classes. Now I'm at the point where I'm teaching those classes. Yep. So it's a lot of fun. So I'm teaching some at our upcoming um, Colorado, our state association, our state, state conference here soon. And so they're pretty fun. And, and again, it's something that you can you can give your perspective, you can give your um, experiences and how you handle different things. And I think that for our profession, that's the biggest part of it all. Like, how do you handle this? How do you handle that? I mean, I've been doing this. How long have I been in AD 10 years now and 11, 11 years now? Yeah. And that's, I'm still coming across things I've never come across before. You know, it changes. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to veterans that have said the same thing. They've done it for like 20 some years. They're like, I have never seen that before. <laughs> yeah, no, there's I, always, always ways to bounce things off. Yeah, it, it, you finally, uh, I think it's a John Wooden quote. Uh, you know, I finally started to learn when I realized uh, I didn't know everything. Uh, so no, those courses are great. And, and again, for our listeners, uh, take the courses because they are great, but also uh, find a way to take uh, LTC 790, uh, which allows you to then go back to your state and teach courses uh, like Autumn and I get to. So yeah, uh, very good stuff. Oh. We're going to take another quick break and then we'll be back with some more. Please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive for their support of the Educational AD Podcast. You know, it's becoming harder and harder to fund an athletic department, but Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards can generate $10,000 or more every year and also create excitement in the gym with the ultimate game day experience. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or call them at 832-786-0302 to schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com and see exactly what their fantastic products can do for you. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Again, we're visiting with Autumn Sereno. She's an assistant principal and athletic director at Green Mountain High School in Lakewood, Colorado. Autumn, one of the things we try to do with the podcast is this idea of sharing best practices. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, what are some things that you and your staff do at Lakewood that when you take a step back and look at them, uh, you can say, boy, we really do a great job. Uh, do you have any best practices you can share? Yeah, um, you know, here at Green Mountain High School, and, and we've done it, I've done it in other buildings I've been in as well, but, you know, specifically here at Green Mountain, um, I was brought on um, at a time where they were really needing um, a little bit of a change culturally. Um, that was something that the principal that hired me had asked me to do, was to come in and help change that culture a little bit, bring it have more of a positive spin on it. Like how can we uplift ath athletics a little bit more? It's a school that was built in the seventies. 
um, has some great tradition in the, in the past, have some of success um, and just hadn't seen some for a little bit. However, that being said, I mean, I came in and baseball had just won back-to-back -back titles. So they weren't too well off, too bad off, you know, and not only that, but um, our gymnastics program just won a state title too, just before I came in. So I was like, all right, well, we're doing all right. So we're not, not as bad as you think, but um, so something that I had done coming in and, and with the, when in conjunction with my staff, my coaching staff was I brought in a we I took a group of kids to a leadership uh, conference that that we kind of put on within the district. It was just right here locally, um, a few different schools right here. And in one of the sessions that we sat in, they talked about this game changer checklist that they that they had done. And it was within like it wasn't within a high school it was within kind of a youth sports type thing. And it was basically like, here's a checklist and here's how you get better. And here's how you know. And so we kind of took that, spun it a little bit and made that kind of part of our value, our philosophy, our core values um, moving forward. And we're the Green Mountain Rams. And so we named it the, we call it the Ram Standard. And so I had a group of kids that we took a full year, like we took our time with this. We met uh, one, one to two times a month. Most of the time it was twice a month. We met and we talked through this. Like, what do we want our core values to be? What makes a person successful, um, not only on the sports field or in any sports arena, but also in the classroom because we are student athletes, right? And so we came up with a few different things. We broke it down, kind of gave little explanations of each of them. And so what we came up with was our game changer checklist, um, which is right there behind me. You can see. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I'm going to ask you that about that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we have those actually posted up in all the classrooms now, but I'll get to that. So we created these bag tags and um, basically you can put your name on it, put your number, and then this is our checklist. And so it looks like the yellow looks a little bit wordy, but that's supposed to be there. The white is kind of like the baseline of it. So being re it's be resilient, improve yourself, bring positive energy, control what you can control, embrace the process, show class and love your family. And so each of those areas is kind of what we try to strive for. And so that's not just within athletics, but it's also in the classroom. If you have a big test coming up or a choir performance, whatever it is, like, you know, we all go through all of these. And so we decided to, we set this all up and put it out there. And so I made these bag tags for every athlete in the building. And that's how I started. It was with athletics. Um, and we ran our athlete, we did an athlete of the week. Um, and we would do like, here's the, here's the standard for this week. And then you know, kids were nominated based on that. So it may not necessarily be the best performer of the week, but what we were looking for was the best mix of, you know, how were they following the game changer checklist? Was it somebody that was just like came back from an injury, you know, that resiliency piece or whatever. I mean, it could just be that bringing, bringing that positive energy, that one person that just like really helps change the game for you. And it, again, it may not be somebody that, you know, gets a ton of playing time. However, sometimes it ends up being that person too. So in the person that we most rely on, um, but we would do the athlete of the week based on that. Um, we had some other departments in the building that started to do that for like, you know, like the math department, you know, that sort of thing would do awards off from it. Um, this year we actually changed, we, we had a transition with principals and the new principal coming in, loved it and said, you know what, with me coming in, it's a perfect time to kind of make some adjustments here. Why don't we take that checklist and why don't we put that on the academic side too? And so he's really been, and that's where the posters came from. We, we started making, we printed up these bag tags, just the one side, and now they're all up in the classroom. I have them, I've been putting, I've been hashtagging Ram standard for the longest time on like our social media since we started all of this. Um, but then we put, you know, on the stairs that go up upstairs, we have each of the stairs has one of the Ram standards written on it. And so that was kind of cool. So now for it to be kind of throughout the building in the classrooms too. Um, and then we were doing some academic uh, RAM standard awards. And so kid, teachers are nominating students and why like um, this kid control what you can control. And this is why, you know, and kind of we'll, and we'll nominate that kid. And so we brought it into those, those awards as well. And we have some other plans for it too, but it's just been something that we can kind of go back to and, you know, we can um, always say like, are we following the RAM standard? You know, this is what it is. This is us doing our best and doing everything we can. Are we putting that effort toward it? Are we 
you know, there for our teammates or we're there for our colleagues, you know, so it's pretty cool. Um, so that was something that I'm really proud of and something that we started, started here. Um, so I guess that's one of the big things. <laughs> You know, a lot of people talk about culture and, you know, how do you do it? Well, you just gave a, a very condensed version of, hey, this is how you do it. And, and I love the part where you said, you know, hey, we took our time. You know, we sat down with the student athletes, uh, the leadership team and put it all together. Um, that in itself, I'm telling you, because I, I, I was on certification for many, many years. There's your CMAA project. I mean, you not only have you know, the beginning, but a history, it's been augmented and tweaked. Now, you just have to put together that 30 minute PowerPoint to uh, share with somebody on certification. So uh, you're there. Okay. Thanks for that. Maybe I'll dive into that. Maybe uh, I'll have I, to dive into it. Um, and again, my, my suggestion is you still have the written option. And for our listeners too, uh, you can still write out your project, which is what I did 100 years ago. But uh, I can tell you, if they had the oral presentation option around when I was doing it, I would have been all over that. Uh, yeah. So Same. anyway, uh, we'll do this at the end of the interview. But Autumn, if one of our listeners wanted to reach out, pick your brain a little bit about, you know, RAM standards or anything else, uh, what's the best way that they can get a hold of you? Um, definitely my email, acereno, A-S-E-R-E-N-O, at jeffgoschools.us. And I'll put, I'll give you that information to, to post out there for everybody. Okay. Um, Autumn Serrano, uh, Green Mountain High School, Lakewood, Colorado. We're going to take another break, but please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to say thanks to Vital Signs Wall of Fame. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They've got a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles, along with an extensive library of templates to make it easier than ever to recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. For ideas on how to showcase your school's diverse history, along with your proudest moments, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com or to learn more and get started with your digital Wall of Fame tribute. Call them at 614-981-3589 or you can email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com to get started. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Autumn, one of the questions we've asked our ADs for a long time uh, on the podcast uh, is uh, surrounding this idea of social awareness. Uh, I know that term covers a lot of ground, but how can an athletic director do a better job of being socially aware for their, their teams, their coaches, their community? Uh, do you have any advice for us? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, really having a group of people that you can rely on as your pulse, you know, those that are out there and kind of what they're feeling. I feel like I, I always say that it's a selfish thing that I do by having my um, athlete leadership team, my, my leadership council. Um, because I selfishly get to have a group of kids that I can rely on and talk to. Um, and it's to help them really with our culture, our climate, as well as helping them goal setting, helping them be better leaders. But at the same time, like they're helping me understand what's happening out there, how they're feeling, how, you know, that group is feeling um, from the student athlete perspective is same thing with our coaches. Like we meet regularly, we meet on a monthly basis um, assistant coaches, head coaches, uh, you know, and trying to get a little bit, a good feel for, again, what's, what are you feeling? What's going on there? And, you know, kind of tapping into that and seeing, you know, where that takes you. Um, you know, that I feel like a lot of things come up regarding gender equity. Uh, and there's obviously, there's been a lot of stuff out there with it being the 50th year of title nine. Um, and so that's something that lately is on my mind. And, and the reason that I thought this would be a good a good thing to talk about, I guess, um, you know, there's, is we, we kind of look back on what is, um, what, how, how has this impacted us? And I, I look back on my experience as an athlete and I don't consider myself being that old, but I am older. <laughs> like I'm way older than our kids now. And thinking about what my experiences were back, you know, in the late nineties when I was in high school and, kind of moving into college and then now and what the opportunities are 
and also just growing up, like growing up playing basketball, it was just kind of like a thing, like our whole town played. And, you know, looking back on other people's experiences, depending on where you were in different parts of the country, we're a tiny bit different. And it's just hilarious. I was talking to a woman the other day that mentioned that she was in the Midwest. And, you know, when she was, she said early 80s, and they were they went over to another state to play a team and they were it, female two two women's basketball teams were playing half court. I was like, are you kidding me? Is that, was that seriously a thing? I thought we were past that at that point and then putting it in perspective, you know? So that all being said, just kind of looking back and, and everything, like I, I remember playing with the boys a lot. That's who I got to play with. That's who, if we wanted to play pickup, girls weren't going to play pickup very often. And if they were, it wasn't, um, for me, it wasn't as competitive in the area that I grew up in. So yeah, we're going to play with the boys. My brother quit playing one-on-one -on -one against me because I started to beat him. <laughs> and that's not okay. Cause he's older and bigger and all this stuff. Right. So I don't know. So that's been something that lately I've been thinking a lot about and in doing that, um, I decided that, you know, there's tons of people here. I mentioned before that the school has some success in the past and, you know, right around the time that it was opening was when Title IX was passed. And so we had this big event during basketball season. Um, I had all these shirts made for our students, our student athletes, our female student athletes, our coaching staff um, that had a big nine on it, Title IX. It has our logo on it, celebrating 50 years. And I contacted some women that were playing or coaching at that in, during that era. So basically during the 70s is kind of the era I picked and kind of picked their brains a little bit about you know, what was your experience like? And, and how do you think that's helped people in the future? And so there are some amazing people that came out of Lakewood, Colorado at that time, um, at both athletes and coaches. Um, one of them that I spoke to, gosh, such an amazing woman is being inducted into the um, basket, women's basketball hall of fame. I'm like, wow, so amazing. Um, but anyway, they, there was some great stories out of all of that. And so we had an event at halftime of our first um, girls basketball playoff game that we hosted. And we had these women come and hang out, chat a little bit with, with our, our people. And I don't know, we celebrated them, celebrated and, and thanked them for everything that they've done and what they've gone through to make sure that we have what we have now um, and all the opportunities that we do. And, and a lot of our kids don't even realize that, you know, that wasn't a thing back then. Like, you didn't necessarily get a chance to play. And if you did get to play, you know what? You're probably getting the 6.30 a.m. practice time instead of right after school. And you probably didn't have a locker room. Like, you know, and some of the things that the women were sharing with me kind of went along the lines, uh, along the lines of that. So anyway, it was a really cool event. It was really cool to bring awareness. We also did some announcements on our school announcements that, you know, highlighted some of those people in their stories, as well as some of the staff members in the building. Um, and again, those were different eras and stuff too. Some of the staff members in the building, you know, um, kind of hitting them up and, and kind of where, where they were coming from and where they believe that athletics took them. So it was a really cool event and just something too that, you know, again, with Title IX, the 50, uh, 50 years here this year, you know, just really thought that maybe we could celebrate this in a really cool way. And so posting all those things on social media, we're starting to hit up some of the old, older people that, you know, were around during that time and celebrating them and what they did here, their accomplishments. So it's pretty cool. No, absolutely. I, I love it. And what a great way to make connections with people that might not feel connected to their own school because, you know, the, it was so long ago, but what a great idea. Um, your episode, uh, the one we're doing right now is actually going to be number 296 in our full series. And my 300th interview uh, is going to be with a Title IX pioneer, uh, you know, participated in uh, cross country and track in high school, ran on the boys team and started beating all the boys. And so the boys coach, you know, created a girls team because he couldn't have that uh, uh, and then went on to a long coaching career. So uh, excited about that and appreciate you, uh, uh, you know, reaching out to that group. What a great, uh, great thing to do for those folks. For our cool. listeners, uh, we've been uh, visiting with uh, Autumn Sereno. She's a certified athletic administrator. She's the assistant principal and athletic director at Green Mountain High School in Lakewood, Colorado. But we're not done yet. Uh, we always like to wrap up with the athletic director's toolbox. So uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to hear from Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack that sponsor the AD's Toolbox. 
And when we come back, we're going to find out what Autumn Serrano is going to put into her new athletic director's toolbox. Please stay with us. We want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for sponsoring the Athletic Director Toolbox segment of the podcast. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack also gives you access to the 95% of the parents and the student athletes that really love your program and gives them a voice to help demonstrate the positive impact that athletics has for them. Go to athleticsurveys.com and check out their testimonials, and then give them a call at 1-800-738-6466, or you can email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to check the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Talk to the folks at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them show you how to take your athletic program from good to great. Well, it's that time. We've been visiting with Autumn Serrano, Certified Athletic Administrator from Green Mountain High School in Lakewood, Colorado. Autumn, you're an experienced AD, but uh, right now I'm going to task you with sending out a brand new athletic director on the very first job. What three tools? are going, going to go into Autumn Sereno's Athletic Director Toolbox. <laughs> There's so many things you could use. I'm sure that this list is huge. I need to take a look at them. Um, I think that the three things I would go with, and this is just off the cuff here that I'm, they come to my mind right to begin with, which means they gotta be pretty useful then, right? Um, so for me, Google folders. Google folders are amazing. Google Docs, like organize them in a folder, have your documents because you can share it. It's up to date. You can send a link to get to it. You can access it from your phone. You can access it from a computer. Sometimes it's better to view on a computer, but at least it's all there and it's, it's with you. So if you need those numbers and stuff, I have folders for um, that I call resources for coaches. And so in that folder, we have our feedback meeting materials. I don't call them evaluation. It's a feedback meeting. Um, so we have all the documents for that. We have all of your important dates and phone numbers and links, um, a whole document that just has those in there. So it's like really easy to click. Um, we have, you know, our, our lists of, of athletes that are in the building. So we know who's cleared and who's not like that sort of thing. Um, but there's, that's just a few things that are in there, but there's so many things that again, like, if a coach is stuck and they can't get a hold of somebody like that, everything's right there. Or, you know, you can kind of reference it pretty quick and just send the link to the folder and say, Hey, it's in here. It's in this box and it's all in one place. And my athletic secretary actually has the same has access to it too. She has editing rights to all of it. And so we both kind of work off from that, which is awesome. Um, I think the second thing is probably to have your core values, always have your core values at hand and, you know, these are our RAM standard is kind of ours. And so this is what I stick to. And I, I kind of reference back um, whenever I can, when, when things pop up that way, you know, you're always making the right decision, you know? Um, and then my last thing would be in that toolbox is to uh, crunch up your, your uh, mentors and fit them in that box because uh, your people are, are very important. Um, and those relationships are really important. And those are going to be your, your go-to people. And um, those that you need and, and be there for them too. So I don't know. I think those are my three, three things, Google core values and mentors, your people. Uh, I'm sure you saw me scribbling down those notes, uh, all great stuff. Um, not surprised. It, no, this won't surprise you that those are all, uh, in our, uh, athletic directors toolbox, uh, top 20 lists. So, uh, including oh, number one. Okay. Um, Autumn, this has been cool. Again, uh, you know, you and I connected uh, at NADC and, uh, you know, it's, it's been great uh, getting to know you a little bit more. Um, if one of our listeners wants to reach out and listeners, I encourage you to do so. Um, what's the best way that they can get a hold of you? Um, definitely through email. Um, so my email address is aserino, A-S-E-R-E-N-O at jeffgoschools.us. So, yeah, come 
send me an email, anything you'd like materials, anything like that. I love sharing that stuff. Um, there's a bunch of, I feel like a bunch of my feedback meeting stuff is up on uh, our state organization website, but anything you want, I love to share that stuff. I think it's helpful and tweak it, tweak it to what fits you. That's what I've done. I've taken lots of things and tweaked it into one document that works, works for me and, and the staff that's, that's here and a different school. It might, my, I might tweak it to be, you know, fit that staff better. So. No, absolutely. We, we don't want to reinvent that wheel. No. <laughs> Autumn Serino, thank you so much for being on the podcast today and all the best moving forward uh, you know, with the, uh, the close of uh, the 2022 school year. Thank you so much for having me. This is, this is great. I love this podcast and uh, all the people you bring on. We learn a lot from each other. So thank you very much. Oh, well, you're very kind. Uh, for our listeners, remember the Zoom recordings of all of our interviews are uploaded to the Educational Lady Podcast YouTube channel. We appreciate you listening today. Come back just about every single day for new content on the Educational AD Podcast. We want to thank Hometown Ticketing for their support of the Educational AD Podcast. Hometown Ticketing is the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. You can find out more about what Hometown Ticketing can do for you and your school by going to hometownticketing.com and talk to their experts. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing.